Hello and welcome to GTC for March 2023. In this session, we are going to be looking at some of the recent innovations in deep learning technology. Specifically, we'll take a look at DLSS and also take a look at uh, both generative models and large language models and how they can be used for creative industries and also in enterprise. My name is Andrew Edelston. I'm really excited. I hope you are too. So let's get moving. So let's start by taking a look at the latest with DLSS version 3. So as you can see from the demo video there, DLSS gets some amazing results in terms of performance numbers. But also, uh, we've got wonderful results in terms of games numbers. Since we launched DLSS, we now have over 250 games that have integrated the technology. And even more impressively, I think, uh, we have now 50 games that have integrated DLSS version 3. And that's only since uh, September last year. So it's pretty uh, amazing uptake. So how does DLSS get those increases in performance? Well, we use DLSS version 2, the super resolution network, as a starter. That allows the rendering engine to target a lower resolution than it normally would. Typically, if the gamer's screen is 4K, the rendering engine has to output to 4K. But when we're using DLSS, we can have the rendering engine render to a lower resolution, in the example here, 1080p. So that has four times less pixels than what the screen has. We then use a convolutional autoencoder that we have trained, and we've used our supercomputer to train it to do upscaling really well. So it takes the color inputs and certain other inputs from the game engine, and it then is able to upscale that final color to output to the screen resolution, thus saving the rendering engine so much time and increasing the performance. And now with the Ada GPU architecture, we introduced a second component into DLSS. DLSS version 3 includes frame generation. So we still use the super resolution network. That's getting us a nice benefit already. And now the frame generation gets us even more of that nice performance increase that we were seeing. It works using a few different components. So firstly, we take uh, two sequential frames from the game renderer. We then use a piece of hardware that's available on the Ada GPU called the Optical Flow Accelerator. We then have a custom trained neural network that takes the different inputs, both the sequential frames, different signals from the game engine itself, along with a flow field that's generated by the OFA unit. The neural network is then able to place an interpolated frame of very high quality in between the two rendered frames. And thus, when we output all those frames together, we greatly increase the frame rate and the overall smoothness of the gameplay for the gamer. So that's a little bit about how DLSS functions. And now I wanted to get the word out to developers that the DLSS SDK has had some significant updates. So firstly, with super resolution, we've further enhanced the neural network for the standard uh, upscale modes. And we've also added a new network just for the ultra performance mode. That's where we're doing a 9x upscale. The big news, though, is that the DLSS frame generation is now available publicly. Uh, 
Uh, it's also going to be coming to Unreal version 5.2. And we put in several enhancements to improve the quality of the generated frames, especially for UI elements, and especially when there's a significant motion and motion blur going on uh, in the scene. The final update I just wanted to mention is for our DLAA mode, that's our super high resolution anti-aliasing mode. Uh, we've put in an updated network for that, and that will allow for a better edge quality and reduce ghosting when they're very high contrast scenes. For more information, please jump onto the developer zone and look for the DLSS section.